It's a time for more packages from China. Let's go. Hey, hey, it's awesome that you're tuning in. So in today's video, it's time to take a close look at this new Embernic that came here in the Wicked Cave. It's the RG405V. Embernic is basically the king of releasing devices, but I must say when it comes to Embernic, they do have a lot of quality devices. But nevertheless, what we're going to get is basically a thick or very deformed Game Boy version. And I must say that I was surprised to see that it was releasing another Game Boy lookalike. Nevertheless, why I just called it a Game Boy lookalike? Because the form factor is quite authentic. And I really love the way how this thing looks, but also how it feels. And I already noticed a couple of say improvements over all the previous models that we're going to talk about today. So this is the old school version with the gray shell and of course the very nice purplish buttons. <laughs> but let's do a quick overview what are we actually going to get and is this thing really worth picking up beside that let's take a close look inside the package itself what are we going to get so first of all you can order them with different sizes of memory cards this is the one on 28 gigabyte but the unfortunate thing is better said i hate it because they are not like high quality ones they can get corrupted fairly easy i have seen it with game sticks handhelds you name it then we're going to get ourselves the cable USB for charging. There is no power supply. You need to get yourself a power supply itself. So that's a little bit of a bummer. If you want to apply the screen protector, we're going to get ourselves the wipes for cleaning the screen itself. So in here, we're going to find the glass screen protector. So that's pretty damn cool that I'm going to give you one. The consideration if you order these things, it's always like double check if you're going to get it. Sometimes you have different kind of bundles and also depending where you're going to buy it. Including a manual, it's a very thin manual actually, not the toilet paper kind, but this more the glossy one. But to give you a quick overview, what you can actually do with it, how does it work, read through it, because there are a couple of things you need to know, but also we're going to show you here in this video. But let's assemble the extra SD card, because that's the first thing that we need to do. Specification wise, it looks pretty damn cool with the Unisoc Tiger T618, that's a 64 bit octa core. Nevertheless, we're going to get ourselves the Mali G52 running on 850 megahertz, like a GPU, 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4, and then Android 12 with a built-in software front-end. So, at first, I really love the form factor of the device itself, but also when it comes to the button configuration. The reason why, because I am a D-pad player, especially when it comes to retro emulation. But we're going to test out what can we actually play with this thing. At the front, we're going to get two joysticks. They're similar to the Nintendo Switch. And they also include the click underneath. Then we're going to get this D-pad, the A, B, X, Y buttons, a nice, very clicky home button, and to select and start plastic buttons, not the rubberized. I must say that the D-pad itself feels very nice. It does have a very sturdy feel to it, and it is long travel, but not to the point that it's way too, let's say, strong with a resistance. Nevertheless, I really like it. Another great game if you want to try out the D-pad is of course if you want to play some Contra. And what you can see over here that the game runs pretty damn great in combination with the D-pad. And I've noticed that the D-pad is very comfortable to play. I'm very pleased with that. So when it comes to the buttons over here, we do have a very nice touch with and the touch. Yeah, I can tell you it's very comfortable to play. There are tiny buttons like the Nintendo Switch. That is a little bit of a bummer in my opinion, but the travel is not too long. And what are we going to get underneath? We're going to get ourselves the speakers and we're going to get ourselves an audio jack out. At the left side, there we're going to get ourselves the special button that we're going to use for entering the special menu. Here we're going to put in the extra SD card, so let's do that first. So when it comes to the SD card, I already mentioned before, this is not the best brand or it's not the really brand at all. So I think it's a very, a very smart idea to basically try to backup before you're going to use it or use it, try it and make a backup. Okay, so let's take a close look at the top. Here we're going to get ourselves a ventilation output and we're going to get ourselves the Type-C connection. So at the left side, we're going to get ourselves the on-off switch and volume control. And at the back, we're going to get ourselves an active cooling fan. This thing doesn't turn on every single time. So when are you going to be booting it up? Then we will have like a second or so that we're going to be hearing it. That's it. And then, of course, we're going to get ourselves the four shoulder buttons or back buttons. Shoulder, not really shoulder, and back. The first thing I'm noticing with this, it's very easy to reach, even to the point that it's going to be even a little bit too easy. So when I'm basically moving my fingers around, I can just press the buttons fairly easy. 
And the reason why, because they give it a very nice angle. So by holding it, you can press them very really easy. And I already mentioned before, it's a little bit too easy in my opinion. But when it comes to the feel, very nice micro switch. I love it. Nevertheless, when you're going to be powering on the first time, we need to set it all up. So this thing comes also with a built-in vibrator motor, and it's quite aggressive in my opinion. It will take a couple of seconds to boot up the first time, and before you're going to be booting up, sometimes it will start spinning, especially when you're going to be like using a lot of power from the CPU GPU. There we go. It will set up everything automatically, and there's nothing you need to do. So it's kind of nice, also because of the touch screen. You can basically also use a device like this because when it's even Android, not every single device on the market will have a touchscreen. But I think it's pretty cool that you have the option for it. So when the system has been booted up, what you're actually going to get is everything is pre-installed on the device itself. Of course, the Play Store, you need to add your account if you want to do so, let's say adding new games to your system. But for now, we're just going to focus on emulation. So when it comes to the overall emulation, we have all kinds of emulators preset. I think it's pretty damn awesome too. Nevertheless, when you're going to use the side button over here, here we're going to get ourselves the special Embernic launcher. And from this point on, you can just choose what kind of game you want to play. So if you just want to play in the, with a device like this, you can just easily play all kinds of old school stuff. So that's the reason I wanted to focus on some other stuff. Think in particular, like when it comes to Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, you know, the stuff that doesn't run great, including PlayStation 2. So first of all, you know, there are all kinds of different games on here. So I'm really curious what I'm actually going to get. The overall menu looks kind of basic in my opinion. So there's nothing really special going on. I have seen some better options when it comes to Bodocera. Maybe in the future they will also add a Bodocera or Amulet software upgrade. I'm really curious about that. But here have all kinds of different ways to play. Nevertheless, let's deep dive into it. Let's of course pick a couple of let's say old school games. But I just wanted to showcase what you can actually do. But okay, so let's take a close look at some overall emulation performance and how does actually this system work. So if you just want to play some old school games like me, yeah, it's going to be absolutely a lot of fun. Nevertheless, the emulation for the old school stuff is just great and looks amazing. Another thing I find very pleasant is the overall audio quality of this device. But in consideration, if you want to go back to the menu, pressing select and start will give you the retro arc menu. Here we can, of course, make a quick load, quick save. So yeah, that's one of the ways you can make a quick load, quick save. If you close the content, we'll go back to the emulator it was actually running on, pressing the button at the side again, a couple of times, will bring you back to the menu. So let's say if you want to choose a different game, it will ask you if you want to have the old game or a new game. So let's choose I want the old game. It will go back to the retro art menu because I already like went to that point. So it's a little bit strange in my opinion how it all works in my opinion. It's not perfect, but you know, it does the job. So here we need to choose new game and it will put up retro arc again. And that's it. Another option we can do is holding the home button and this will bring you automatically to the software itself. And from this point on, so let's say I want to return to the game. Here we can make the option for an old game or a new game, let's say the old game, and now we'll go back to the menu itself. So it works slightly different when you're comparing this with different devices. You can see the game has a quick load, quick save, but also you can use the original save file. So I think it's pretty damn cool. All right, so next up, let's try some PlayStation 1 emulation because this is one of the systems that runs on so many devices now. Both of the analog stick and the D-pad have been configured. Since we also they added a lot of good games with including some audio. I'm completely in my twisted metal vibe moment at the moment, simply because with the new show or the show that's actually online, it's pretty damn cool, still want to see it. But so much fun. Next up, let's try some N64, one of those systems I wanted to see getting run perfectly, let's say supported and running great on the file like this. But of course it's going to be a mixed performance, but just wanted to check out some S0. So when it comes to the overall performance, I think it's going to be a mixed performance. 
But this particular game seems to be running fine. I did hear some minor dips over there in the beginning, but beside that, it runs pretty cool. So the configuration of the analog sticks at the bottom part, I don't know how you think about it, but I don't really like this. That's the reason I love the D-pad, it's always positioned here. Next up, let's take a close look at the Red Dream emulator. So far I can see, let's put this on off, because I just wanted to see actually how it will run. Vertical sync, frame rate, we're going to put it on there. Resolution up, so it will run in original data for resolution. That's a little bit of a bummer because I think this device maybe had the option of doing a little bit of an upscaling. Not that it really matter because it's still a tiny display. It looks just great this way. And one thing I also noticed that it does have vibration motor built in, but so far none of the emulators have been configured by it. A little bit of bummer because it would be very cool extra. But if you're going to look into the PlayStation 2 emulation, there we're not going to get perfect overall emulation performance at every single game. It just pushes the device to the limit. And you can just hear that it stutters all the freaking time. Even with the first part. I really don't consider this as playable in my opinion. But if you're going to get into some basic gaming, there we're going to find some good enough performance that we can enjoy some two-dimensional PlayStation 2 games. So if the compatibility is great and not too demanding, there are games actually that can be played from the PlayStation 2 platform. So next up, let's try some Sonic on the Game Boy Advance. We have so many gazillion devices nowadays that we can actually play on this. But if you just have one single device like this arm bending device, it's pretty damn cool to have actually a cool way to play. But another system I really was looking forward to testing out is the GameCube part on this. But first of all, I just wanted to check out some fighting games. And I've noticed that the D-pad is very comfortable to play. I'm very pleased with that. But the overall performance is okay in my opinion. It runs around 30 FPS's. So it's unfortunately not full speed. So it's pretty damn cool to actually see this game running. Yeah, 31, 32 speed. Yeah, is it really playable? Yeah, that is something you need to decide yourself. Alright, so next up I want to try some PlayStation and just to see how far we can push it. I have been setting it to one times resolution and two times, but with two times resolution in combination with God of War, it's not going to be working that great. You can see a lot of stuttering and we can mess around with the emulator if you want to. The frames get, have been set to 1 from default but I basically shut that down because I want to have the full speed of the game. Next up let's go back to the menu and let's go back to the game. And with just a normal resolution or let's say one time it runs pretty good. But it doesn't have to say that you cannot run different games. In two times resolution. So next up, let's try Sega Saturn, but that doesn't really run that great out of the box. Okay, let's try a different game. And uh, let's just try some Super Bonum Man. You can also mess around with the emulators, but I just wanted to see how it actually runs out of the box. 
depending on what kind of game you're playing but the overall performance out of a box I find it quite disappointing to be honest and also no idea why my buttons aren't configured uh, there's absolutely one huge gigantic mess that's a little bit of a bummer in my opinion Ah, oh, they switch it to the back buttons. Ah, but still, it's a little bit of a bummer because it does look absolutely amazing on this device. Nevertheless, when you're looking at this particular device, I must say that I'm quite surprised by it. It is a very comfortable device, also um, does have a very nice weight to it. And yeah, when you're looking at display, but yeah, the, the software itself feels a little bit clunky when it comes out of the box with the Android launcher. Of course, it's way really better than having nothing, but in my opinion, the overall experience, it's okay. But thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and it will be great to see you in the next video. Mm.